metals and non metals lecture number 2 in this lecture we discuss about the chemical properties of metals and non metals plus uh, the reaction with various other substances and also about those new substances coming to the other type of materials what i mean to say is apart from metals and non metals there are actually other type of materials also which are metalloids a metalloid is an element which has the intermediate properties of a metal and a non metal now coming to allotropes allotropes are two or more different forms of a same material for example graphite and diamond are allotropes of carbon now let us study the reaction of a metal with oxygen almost all metals combine with oxygen to form a metal oxide but all metals do not react with oxygen at the same rate different metals show different reactivities towards oxygen metal oxides are basic in nature but some metal oxides are amphoteric Most of the metal oxides are insoluble in water but some of these dissolve in water to form alkalis for example if you take sodium oxide when reacts with water will give me sodium hydroxide which is an alkali right now let us learn about amphoteric oxides these are metal oxides which show both acidic and basic behavior such metal oxides react with both acids and bases as well to produce a salt and a water these are the examples of an amphoteric oxide and given below are two examples where we get a salt and a water Now let's look at the reaction of a metal with water. Potassium and sodium react very violently with water. Calcium reacts less violently. Magnesium reacts only with hot water. Aluminum, iron and zinc react with steam only. Lead, copper, silver and gold do not react with water at all. given below is the setup to make a metal react with steam please have a look now let us learn of about the reaction of a metal with an acid metal when reacted with a dilute acid will give me salt and hydrogen Hydrogen gas is not evolved when a metal reacts with a nitric acid. This is an exception. The reason is because nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent. It oxidizes the hydrogen produced to water and itself gets reduced into any of the nitrogen oxides. But magnesium and manganese react with very dilute HNO3 to produce hydrogen gas this is a special exception now coming to aqua regia aqua regia is a freshly prepared mixture of concentrated hydrochloric acid and concentrated nitric acid 
and a ratio of 3 is to 1. This is how it looks. Now let us learn about anodizing. It is a process of forming a thick oxide layer of aluminium to prevent corrosion. During anodizing, a clean aluminium article is made the anode and is electrolyzed with the dilute sulfuric acid. The oxygen gas is evolved at the anode reacts with the aluminium to make a thicker layer of aluminium oxide. This aluminium oxide coat makes it resistant to corrosion. Now, reaction of a metal with a solution of other metal salts. The basic equation is this one. It, it is nothing but a displacement reaction. Considering metal A is more reactive than metal B, as previously discussed, I take the case of an iron nail dipped in a copper sulfate solution. Now coming to the reactivity series. A reactive series is a list of a metal arranged in a decreasing order of reactivity. Given below is the list of the reactivity or it's nothing but the reactivity series. Please have a look. Now let us see the reaction of a metal with a non-metal. When a metal and a non-metal react with each other, transfer of electrons takes place from the metal to the non-metal. The reason is, metal is electro-positive in nature and a non-metal is electro-negative in nature. Now, let us learn about ionic compounds. These are the compounds that are formed by the complete transfer of electron from a metal to a non-metal. For example, sodium chloride. Ionic compounds have a strong electrostatic force of attraction between the ions. Now let us learn the physical property of an ionic compound. Ionic compounds are solids and are somewhat very hard. Ionic compounds have a very high melting point and boiling point. Ionic compounds are generally soluble in water but insoluble in solvents such as kerosene, petrol, diesel. Ionic compounds do not conduct electricity in the solid state, but they definitely conduct it in the molten state or when dissolved in water. In the following part of the lecture, we will be learning about the metals, how they occur and the process related to it. Now coming to the extraction of metal. For extracting a metal, we first of all need something called as an ore. Different ores have different extraction processes depending on how they react. The activity series has, be, has been shown below. Please have a look. The same is being shown in the next slide. given aside are the processes of extraction.
Now let us have a look at the flowchart of the extraction process. Now let us learn the variation in this process. For a metal in a low activity region, these being non-reactive, these uh, the oxides of these metals can be reduced to a metal by simple heating. For the metals lying in the middle region of the activity series, they being moderately reactive, these are usually present as sulfides or carbonates in nature. They are first converted to metal oxides and then reduced to the metal. Some of the processes involved are roasting. Roasting is nothing but the heating of the sulphide ore in the presence of excess of air to form oxide ore. Given below is an example. Similarly, I have calcination, which is the heating of the carbonate ore in a limited supply of oxide in a limited supply of air to form an oxide ore. Now, for those metals which are in the region of higher activity, because these elements have a greater affinity to oxygen than for carbon, usually electrolysis is the best method suggested for these metals. Electrolytic reduction of molten sodium chloride. At cathode, this is a reaction, and at anode, chlorine gas is evolved. The electrolytic refining of a metal is done in this way. These are the reactions at the anode and cathode. Now let us learn about the important terms. First term is corrosion. This is a process of uh, this is the process in which a metal gets attacked by air or water. For example, rusting. Corrosion can be prevented by painting, oiling, greasing, galvanizing, etc. Now, let us learn about galvanization. It is the method of protecting the steel and iron from rusting by coating them with a thin layer of zinc. Galvanized article is protected against rusting even if the zinc coating is broken. Now, let us learn about alloys. An alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or a metal and a non metal. For example, brass, bronze, steel, stainless steel solder and also cast iron. Now coming to mineral. Minerals are those elements or compounds which occur naturally in the earth's crust. An ore. Ore is a mineral that contains a very high percentage of a particular metal from which the metal can be profitably extracted. Gang Gang is nothing but an impurity present in an ore. Now let us learn about the enrichment of an ore. Ores mined from the earth are usually contaminated with gang which is obvious. The removal of gang from the ore is known as enrichment of ore. The process used for the enrichment of ore depends on the physical and chemical properties of the gang. It is not same for all the ores. Now coming to the summary part, we expect the student to uh, read it on his own.
Thank you.